Hey guys and welcome to our off-road camper build. Now before I start I just wanted to wish all of you guys wherever you are in the world that you and your loved ones are well and coping with all the changes that are happening. I know in my part of the world here in Australia things are being tightened up every day. We can still go out and get the necessities but they're basically saying we want you at home self-isolating and working from home if you can um, which I really can't <laughs> but then again all my clients have either been forced to shut up shop or have wound their businesses back because they don't have any work so um, I kind of like a full-time youtuber at the moment which is really scary so don't forget to like and subscribe um, but no we're fine over the last week or two I could see this sort of coming so I've amassed nearly all the parts to uh, finish this camper off I think I just need the battery and mattress and I'll, I've probably got stuff that I don't need and haven't got stuff that I do but anyway we'll get to that at the time comes mail order is still working well I noticed I've ordered a couple of things from the US and I've got one in Sydney going through biosecurity bio and one just about to leave the US so things snake their way slowly and if this is how it's going to work I'm okay with it just trying to get myself into a routine now where I go out and do an 8 or 10k walk in the morning uh, it clears my head hopefully it'll lose some of this fat on this body and um, yeah we'll get to the end of it and we'll be a lot fitter and hopefully healthier and uh, we can get back on with life but anyway I hope everyone's well now onto the camper build now first up we're going to talk about these tail light holes again I hope this is worth it in the end uh, the tail light buckets need a rebate on the outer edge so they'll fit flush um, and the rebate probably needs to be five mil deep and five mil larger than in the internal size of the hole um, the internal size holds it in the rebate lets it sit flush and I thought oh, I'll just get a router bit that's like the finishing bit for ball bearing on the end and just trace around the hole however I couldn't find a router bit that was suitable they all had some sort of profile on or the uh, the amount they'd take out was like 15 mils or 12 mils or something which is far too much so <laughs> I've MacGyvered up a, a, an outcome I used a 6 mil router bit and roughly went around the hole and then I was thinking oh I just need to sand it flat now and I thought oh, I'll just get my flapper wheel and because it's round that'll give me a round edge what I didn't realize that the flapper wheel is the uh, exact size that I needed so by slowly slowly putting it in and sanding it off and then sanding it down so it fell into the uh, the hand-drawn router edge it's actually worked out perfect <laughs> I'm not going to say to you to do it but it did work out really well um, so yeah another problem finished um, but the real re the reason that I'm, that needed to be done in this was that once I put the aluminium composite on when we use the finishing bit to cut the holes if these weren't routed out of the timber they'd they'd cut the holes to the inside size of the, the these holes uh, which would be too small so by routing out this channel um, it'll cut it to that size which means that they'll slip in the inside diameter of the holes will hold the bucket in with some Sikaflex and the outside diameter will let them fit flush so it worked out really well in the end but yeah a bit of head scratching with that one now with the cladding for the back of this camper um, it's basically the same as the front it'll finish at the top of this panel it'll bend here I've got to route out a, uh, a channel across the Composite, so it does bend and I've got also got to route out a channel down at the bottom of this angled section so it bends and then it will go in on my on my camper about 35 mils before affixing and that 35 mils affixes to the bottom of the floor the reason I've done that is if we say this this tube here is the rear cross member of the camper and this piece of timber is the floor of the camper that overhangs the 35 mil um, the composite sheet will will come down bend and then affix to the floor and butt up against that rear cross member 
and in my mind that should give us good waterproofing without having to worry about a cover strip that goes across. So that's the theory behind it. Let's go and cut our grooves and stick this thing to the back of the camper and see how it goes in practice. with the gap between the trailer backbone uh, where the pit, rear tow pintle is on the chassis and the uh, camper shell. Uh, there was just three millimetres to wiggle the composite material in. So what I ended up doing was uh, where the, the first fold was with the 35 mils that attached to the floor, I sicker flexed all that along. Um, and the good thing about that is that's also sealed up that edge. And then after getting all my positions right, I put self tappers in through that front edge and through the floor and um, then I could lay the whole panel back, put the contact on, let it dry and then just press it all up and it's gone up absolutely perfect. So very happy with that. If I would have tried to wrestle it, I would have, it would have been a world of hurt. <laughs>
So you're best off trying to dry test this and then you can work out uh, a way to attack it. And I, I, it's worked out very well. Cutting out these holes and the door and everything, an absolute pain. We know all about that now. Uh, the clean up, it's best to use a dustpan to get rid of the bulk of it and then I just get the leaf blower, blow the whole lot out and then blow the garage floor out. So that's it for today guys. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, that's been quite frustrating today but it's all ended up quite well in the end. I don't know why. But anyway, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye now.